When id Software unleashed the original Doom, it struck you into a realm of suspense, chaos, and glory. For those who have battled in the original, they will forever remember the iconic full Ultimate Doom and the hellish episodes it brought forth. From facing zombies, imps, and barons to even the great cyber demon itself, you begin to realize that Hell's army is destined to destroy you. But as you reach into the great depths of Hell, you discover one of the most iconic weapons in the history of gaming, the BFG-9000. It roughly takes almost a second to fire the BFG before it ejects a massive plasma ball which pretty much obliterates everything in its path. Using the same elbow as the plasma gun, it is a gun only to be used in a desperate or overwhelming situation. A total of 40 cells are used, so it can only fire 7 times before you have to find more ammo or the backpack power up. But the damage? Well, the damage is pretty incredible if used properly. A total amount of 800 hit points can cause damage to the target, along with additional damage caused by secondary tracers. These tracers are set at the player's location, which fire within a certain field to the projectile's direction. In simple terms, it directly hits the target, and then destroys the target again plus everything around it, so it pretty much obliterates everything. So we all know what the BFG is like on the original Doom, but there are some really weird versions of the BFG on different consoles. The Super Nintendo version of Doom features a bizarre BFG which fires a Baron's Plasma Ball without a subsequent field of damage of detonating, which was a really bizarre interpretation of the gun. Furthermore, the Sega 32X version only features the BFG through a cheat code, which prevents players from reaching the real ending. I don't really recommend playing Doom on the SNES or the sluggish 32X. The consoles at the time were a little bit overwhelmed by the computing requirements of Doom, and the only one that was actually half decent was the Atari Jaguar. Fast forward only a few months and the PS version of Doom came out, which was really decent, but to me it didn't have the feel of the original Doom. For one, the BFG didn't have the same sound effects, but the firing sequence and the consequential damage of the gun was replicated to a decent degree. Go forward a little bit more and we get into the N64 version of Doom, which is a very underrated and completely new take on Hell. It takes place after Final Doom and it features a completely redesigned BFG which has a similar firing sequence to the original with different sound effects. It's arguably not the best weapon in the game but it still is very very powerful and it can pretty much obliterate any enemy. In the latter half of 1997 the BFG shows up in a totally different game made by the same company id Software which is Quake 2 but this time it's a 10,000 series model. It's similar to the original in the fact that it can fire a massive plasma ball with a trajectory of over 34 miles per hour and up to an insane 500 hit points on the primary target. The only difference is, is that this one fires continuous lasers to nearby targets before the plasma ball disintegrates. Which means this thing is a weapon of destruction. Quake 3 continues on with the BFG 10,000 model, but this time it's a little bit different. For one, it's more precision based and its damage is more localized. It's almost kind of like the classic plasma rifle, and considering that Quake 3 was entirely multiplayer, you can understand why this gun does not obliterate everything in your field of view. But don't get me wrong, this gun is still really powerful and it just requires a little bit of skill and precision. Moving a few more years into the future, we reach Doom 3 and it's the next big title to bring back the original BFG 9000 series. It's a more modern interpretation of the gun, which combines the Quake 2 BFG secondary laser style along with the original impact capabilities. The result is a pretty epic gun which is deadly to medium and long range targets. For some, Doom 3 was mediocre, but to me, I thought it was a good game at the time. But it probably didn't age very well. Ironically, the BFG edition of Doom 3 gives much needed improvements and it's the best way to experience the classic game. Twenty-three years later, the original Doom's personification translates into an age old enough to drink, smoke, and buy guns. 
But more importantly, we get the new Doom which provides us with an excellent version of the BFG. You can tell that the developers did their homework on this one because the gun has almost every element of the older models and forces it into one epic weapon. And the Quake Claw Damage capability adds a little nice touch to the gun and adds pure madness to the game. Now does it replicate the original model perfectly? Well, no, because you can't one-shot a Spider Mastermind, nor can you two-shot a Cyber Demon at point-blank range. The gun was still presented quite well in today's modern age, and hopefully the sequel can hold up to its iconic remake and give us many more hours of Demon Slain. So there you have it, the BFG's evolution through several decades has gone through several changes but still remains as the best weapon ever created in gaming. So once again, thanks for watching, please like the video if you enjoyed it, and make sure to subscribe to my channel.